Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our Bible class tonight. Looking forward to getting into the Word of God again with you, sharing with you some unsearchable truths from God's Word. And I just believe that God is going to supernaturally manifest Himself tonight throughout the Word. As we get in this, we're going to be continuing on prosperity God's way. And I want you to really listen to what God is going to say to us tonight because we're going to have to renew our minds to this truth because God wants to see you and I blessed. And we, throughout most of our lives, have gone through financial situations in our lives that do not line up with what God has promised us. And therefore, there are strongholds that have been set up in our minds that we have to break, we have to destroy, we have to tear up and root out, cast down, so that we can plant and build on the revelation that God gives us. So we're going to be breaking down some more truths. And to let you know, and, and I want you to know this message this night is going to absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, prove that God wants his people wealthy and prosperous and walking in divine riches. That is the will of God. And no matter what other people have done and charlatans have tried to manipulate prosperity, but the Bible is the truth and the word of God is God's truth. So we're going to see what the Lord says. So let's pray. Then we're going to get into the word and see what the Holy Ghost has to say. Father, we just thank you for your spirit and your anointing and your presence. And we thank you for what you're about to do in our midst and in our lives. We glorify you, Father. And we thank you because your people are anointed to hear the truth. Your people are anointed to receive the word. And we're going to walk in this word and we're going to walk in this revelation. And we're going to walk in this truth. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are a great teacher and a revealer of revelation knowledge. Our hearts are good ground and you will pour into us the seed of the word, which will bring forth an unlimited fold return in our lives. So, Father, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do in our midst. And we give you alone all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' holy and majestic name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, let's get into the word because there are some things that God wants us to share with you. I'm going to share a scripture with you that we ended last uh, Thursday's message on. And we're going to start here and then we're going to launch off from there and take you into what God wants you to know. Now, before we, I even get into the word, I want you to pray this prayer with me or make this confession with me. Say, Father God, I am righteous. You have made me righteous. I am your child. And the blessings that you have created in the earth are for me. And I set my heart and my mind to receive this truth in Jesus' name. Praise God. All right, let's get into it. God truly desires prosperity for his people. Now, I want you to get that. I want you to see that. I want you to understand that. I want you to know that, that God truly desires prosperity for his people. He does. He wants you and I to prosper. So with that in mind, we're going to see that we're going to prosper in the things of God. So God's desire is for you and I to prosper. All right, now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 5 
And I mean, this just actually spells it out in Ecclesiastes 5. Now let's take a look at verse 19. And the Bible says, I'm not talking about anybody's interpretation, but the Bible says, every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth. You see that? Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth. Watch this now. So God, first of all, gives them riches and he gives them wealth. All right. And so we know that the, the riches are, it, it, it means wealth or riches, and it describes all kinds of wealth, which talks about land. It talks about possession, cattle, or, or whatever commodities are used today. Back in that day was cattle. Even today, there are people that own ranches that have cattle and livestock and whatever. And uh, this also means descendants or your family line is, is, is blessed in wealth. And so here we're talking about riches, uh, where it talks about all kinds of wealth. And then this word also means when we're talking about riches, it also means the ability to make money or riches. So when God is talking here, when it says every man also to whom God hath given riches. Now we know that this word riches means the ability to make money or wealth. Now, remember what the Bible said. We shared this with you earlier in the teaching where God was speaking to Israel and he had given them. He said, you know, it, God has given in the book of Deuteronomy has given you the power to get wealth. And that word get wealth means to make make wealth or make manufacture finances that he may establish his covenant in the earth. He has given us the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth. So that means that wealth is part of the covenant of God. So here we find here where the Bible said where God has given to every man and has given riches and wealth to every man. And that word riches means to make money. You have the ability and the power to make money. I want, you to, I want you to see this. You do. Now, this making money supersedes your job. This making money means that God has gifted you, and we've shared that with you, that your gifts and your callings and your talents have been given for you to profit with all. And therefore, God wants you to profit from your gifts. Now, he said the man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. So the gifts of God that he gives you will prosper you and bless you and take you into areas of prosperity that you never knew you could have. And it is because of the gifts. Now, we know that God warned us about riches. So we're not lusting and we're not loving riches and we're not loving money, but we are loving God. And because we love God, God blesses us with wealth and with riches. So we see here that God wants you to be blessed. All right. Now, now, now listen to this. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth. Now, that word wealth, it means wealth, and it, it talks about all kinds of property and wealth in general. It talks about riches, and it talks about material prosperity in general. So now we're talking about material things. We're talking about uh, material prosperity and wealth. This wealth also, it means that uh, a person can have wealth in all kinds of property. So that would mean land, that would mean houses, that would mean uh, whatever else you would need to uh, walk in. God has given us that ability. And this is what God wants you to understand. He has given you and I the ability to walk in that type of wealth. And that wealth means that any area of life that you go over into, any area of life that you go over into, that area of life can be prosperous for you and it can be prosperous for me. All right. Now, every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth. And now watch this now. Now, this is this is I want you to get this. This is God's mind for you and for me and hath given him power to eat thereof. God has given to every man 
that God has given riches and wealth has also given him the power or the authority to eat thereof. Now, what that means is that all of the riches and all of the wealth that God has given you, he has also given you the power to eat of it or to partake of it. Now, you got to understand this. God has given you that authority. He's given you that right and he's given you that power to actually eat of the riches and the wealth. So that means that when God is blessing you with property and lands and, and money and you're making money, he has given you the power to eat of it. So that means he wants you to spend it. And he wants you to spend some of it on yourself. Yes, he wants you to give to the poor and to support the work of the ministry. But he wants you to live the life and eat of your wealth. So what I want you to see is this, as God begins to prosper you, and, and I'm telling you, God is going to begin to prosper you in ways that you know not of. It's going to take place in ways that you know not of. God is going to supernaturally bring wealth into your life. Uh, at the end of this, uh, we're going to release a supernatural debt cancellation over your life. God has anointed me with that anointing. And, and we're going to break the power of poverty and lack in your life. And we're going to walk in a supernatural revelation of God's ability and God's power. Now, he wants you to enjoy and eat of the riches and the wealth that he gives you. So that means that if he gives you money, then you should not be apologizing to anybody for what God has blessed you with. He wants you to eat of it. I want you to see this because, see, what happens is people who are being used of the devil when when saints get prosperous and when saints get blessed, the devil uses people and even some Christians to come to that saint and try to shame that saint into feeling ashamed about being blessed. You know, good and well, all these poor people in the world and here you, you, you living in a mansion and you, you got all, you know, you got car, you got a boat, you got a, a, a vacation, a vacation home. Now, it's all it's, it's, it's terrible for a Christian or a preacher to have that. But it's OK for rappers and singers and actors and people that do things that lead you into sin. It, it, politicians, it doesn't make any difference. They can have anything and everybody just ooze and ahs over that. But when the Christian. Whatever state of Christianity you're in, whatever state of calling you in, that goes from the ministers all the way down to the usher or the person that's just sitting in the congregation that does not is not functioning in the ministry right then. But they are Christians. God has given you the ability to get wealth and to have riches and for you to eat of it. And he wants you to have it. He wants you to have it. I'm, I'm going to keep saying this throughout this message because God wants you to have some money. How in the world are you going to serve God and you ain't got no money? You can't give in an offering. You can't help anybody that's poor. You don't have a car. You don't have a house. You don't have many clothes. This is not what God said for us to live. And it's not how he wants us to live because we've got to represent him. It's amazing how so many Christians have been duped into believing the lie that to be humble means to be poor. But they don't even understand what humility means. Humility does not mean you, 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 you bow your head down and shuffle your feet and slink around when you walk with your shoulders tucked up and your head bent down. That's not humility. Humility is to believe about yourself and to say about yourself and to act the way God created you to be. That's humility. So when God has created you to be wealthy and in power, as long as you are acknowledging that God is the source of your wealth, the source of your success, the source of your power, then God is blessed and you are being humble. 
Now, there are those that take it to the next level and they go from uh, humility into arrogance. And they're bragging about this and bragging about that. And the way they do it, they're con condescending on people that have not amassed the wealth that they had. Now, I'm telling you, when Christians do that, you run the risk of God removing the wealth and the riches from you because you are using the wealth and the riches as a weapon against God's people. And when this happens, God is not satisfied. Neither is he happy. Neither is he pleased. But we are to use the wealth and the riches that God has given us as a testimony of encouragement to other brothers and sisters in the Lord that God wants them to have the same thing that we have and to use us to be a blessing to those that don't have what we have and to pray for them and to intercede for them so that they can walk in the supernatural revelation of financial prosperity and wealth and riches like the Bible says that we are supposed to walk in. So God wants you to eat of your riches and your wealth. So that means when you get money, spend some of it. Buy you some new clothes. Buy you a new car or a couple of cars if you need them. Buy you a new house. Buy you some nice furniture. Get your stuff. Listen, God doesn't want you going to the sale, sale rack all the time. He wants you going into the store and buying what you want. When God blesses you with riches and wealth, then watch this now. The store prices of the goods don't determine what you buy. Your wealth and your riches in God puts everything that's in that store under your service so that you can proceed to purchase whatever you want. You can walk into a dealership, a car dealership, and you walk in there with your wealth and your riches and you tell them what you want and they will serve you. You're not having to sit down and jangle with them and hope that the credit passes and, and they come back and tell you, you, you can't get a new car, but we can put you in a used one. It's a, you know, it's a, a 10 year old car and it's got about a hundred thousand miles on it, but uh, we can get you in that. And then they're going to charge you $500 a month to get a used car. That's a hundred thousand miles and 10,000 and 10 years old. The devil is a liar. God didn't call us to live like that. He doesn't want us living like that. He wants us to be prosperous and he wants us to be the example to the world of how somebody who serves God can live. And it causes them to become jealous and to become envious because they're seeing God bless us more than what the devil is blessing them. And then they want to find out how in the world is God doing that for you? That opens up the door for you to witness to them and share with them the gospel of how God wants you blessed. Come on, come on. I hope y'all are getting this because this is what God wants you to have. All right now, so he says, have given him power to eat thereof. And there's also, now watch, and there's an and after eat. What do you mean an and? I mean, you're going to eat of it. But what else is left? And to take his portion. And to take his portion. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all seeing this? I'm telling you, God is blessing us right now. And he's causing us to walk in a supernatural way. He wants us to take our portion. You see that? Not only does he want you to eat of it, but he wants you to take your portion. You see that? So he said, that's your portion. That's yours. And when it's yours, listen to it. Your portion of the wealth and the riches that he gives you, that's your portion. He said, take of it. And it's yours and you do with it what you decide to you want to do with it. I want you to know now, if you want to be blessed, I want you to walk in this right now. And I'm going to speak this over you that from this day forward, when God releases that wealth into your hands, you will not be ashamed of being prosperous. You will not allow anybody to make you feel guilty about your prosperity and you will take your portion and do with it as you please and learn to say no to those who would try to use you just because you have wealth. Now, all of a sudden here you've been living and you have, you know, you've been, especially during this pandemic, 
You don't get any phone calls from nobody. You don't get any texts from anybody. You just been by yourself. And all of a sudden you get prosperous and you get wealth. And all of a sudden now you got 6,000 cousins and you got 250, you know, nieces and nephews that you never heard of. But all of a sudden now you've become the top priority on their list. Guess what the words that must come out of your mouth? No, 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 no. Where were you when I needed you? How come I didn't hear from you when I didn't have anything? No, see, this is what people will do. And this is why God put it in here where you can understand this and to take your portion. You see that he wants you to take your portion. That's yours. Do with it what you want. Then he goes on. Is, is more after that? My goodness. I'm, uh, what does God want us to do with all of these riches and wealth? And it says, and to rejoice in his labor. He wants you to rejoice in your labor. Whatever God has used, whatever God, gift God has released into you for you to, to, to be a blessing and to be blessed. He wants you to rejoice in that. Whatever it is that you've been doing to make money and to make riches and to, and to acquire wealth. He said rejoice in it. He wants you, listen, be excited and be glad when God is blessing you. Don't walk around with that guilt complex on your head. I'm doing this and I, I really want to be blessed, but I, I don't know what everybody else think about. You know what? Forget what everybody else is thinking about you. If they didn't like you, when you were poor or when you didn't have anything, they're not going to like you when you got money. They're, got, they, they're not going to like you. They're going to like what you got. You just walk with God and enjoy it. Enjoy your labor. See, you as a Christian and I as a Christian, we got to come out of this poverty syndrome that the devil has put on us and that the world is trying to make us live by. You are to be blessed. You are to be wealthy. I can't put it to you any simpler and clearer than that. But now it's up to you to make a decision that you're going to do those things that will require you to walk in making money. That means you're going to educate yourself. That means you're going to uh, you're going to enhance your gifts. You're going to become polished in your gifts. Why? Because you need to walk in in in, in greatness and you need to walk in uh, perfection. And when I'm talking about perfection, I'm talking about doing things the right way. You want to have the quality, not just the quantity, but you want to have the quality of your work so that your quality outshines anybody else's quality that's doing the same thing that you're doing. And, and so we need to understand this. So now he wants you to enjoy your labor. Are y'all hearing this? Now let's get back into this. Now let's just see. Let's just, let's put the icing on this. Let's start at verse 19 again. Every man. Also to whom God has given riches and wealth and hath given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. What do those next six words say? This is the gift of God. This is is the gift of God. This, I mean, okay, I could just stop right here with just that one verse. We could just stop the message right now and you could just go home and, oh, well, you're already at home probably. And just, 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 just close, turn off the, 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 the whatever you watching this on and just go to rejoicing and praising God because he just showed you what his gift is. He showed you that he wants you to have this. He said, this is the gift of God. This is the God's gift. This is God's gift to you for you to have riches and wealth and for you to enjoy your labor. Come on somebody and to eat thereof and to take your portion. That's God's gift to you. He wants you to have it. He wants you to live like that. So if you don't want to take that gift, if you don't want to live like that, then what you're doing is you're telling God, I don't want what you have. And I don't think any of you are out there listening to this right now are feeling like that. You want it. As a matter of fact, you want it bad and you want it to, I, I just got to get it. I, I, I want it. But I'm telling you what God is doing 
in order for you and I to walk in this kind of prosperity and in this kind of wealth, what he is doing is he is taking us through transitions. Now, the transitions that he is taking us through is he is going deep inside of us and he is taking an introspective view of us on the inside. And every area in our lives that would make us susceptible to being arrogant and high-minded and prideful, God is working on those areas now. So that when he brings us into what the Bible calls that wealthy place, when we've been broken and walked over, you remember men were running over our heads and we've been in the water and in the fire and, and he has delivered us and I has brought us and delivered us into a wealthy place, a place of riches and abundance and overabundance. Well, when God takes you into that place, he wants you not to forget that it was God that gave you the power to get wealth so that you don't start thinking that it was you on your own. And so he works on us and he's breaking us into areas where He's teaching us how to be frugal. He's teaching us how to be thrifty. He's teaching us how to be good stewards, but he's also teaching us how to walk in wisdom. And I want you to understand this. Now, this is, oh, glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is a, a, an area that many Christians don't think about. Before God releases into your hands great amounts of wealth, he wants to open up gifts of the spirit in you that you will have access to basically. And mainly he wants to operate into you through the discerning of spirits. He also wants you to walk in the wisdom of God because the Bible said that a wise man, you know, he, he treats his affairs with discretion. And so you're going to need to have a leading of the Holy spirit and an, in an, in an, inter, in a, in, in an uh, intercession with God where he comes into your life when you are meeting people and you have wealth and then God will intercede into those relationships and begin to give you insight as to if this person is of God or not. Because he doesn't want you, because I'm, I'm telling you, when I played pro, ba pro baseball and, and I have seen athletes making millions of dollars and then living under a bridge. How could that happen? How could that happen? Because they were in, involved with financial investors and financial advisors and, and some agents, and they were taking them to the bank and cleaning them out and, and misusing their finances and misusing their funds. This happens, and I, I know I've lived the life. I know what I'm talking about. I've lived it as, as professional baseball at the highest level in the major league, so I know what I'm talking about. And so I have seen this happen to different people. But I want you to understand, God wants to bless you and to open up his gifts in you so that in the area of finances, you will have discretion. In the area of discerning of spirits, you will know who the devil has put in your life to set you up. There have been many men who have married women and the women only wanted one thing, child support, child support from an athlete who was going to be making millions of dollars. And she married him to, to, get, to have children so then she could get child support and never work another day in her life. I've seen it happen to a lot of athletes and I want you to understand it happens. And, and so what happens is many of the athletes and this, we're talking about baseball, basketball, football, hockey. We're talking about any kind of those sports where these athletes are very famous. And there are women that the devil has sent to these athletes for the express purpose of getting them tied up so that once they get married to them, they get access to their finances. And once they get access to their finances, then if there's a divorce that takes place, they're paying alimony and child support. And I'm telling you, they're paying two and three, three hundred thousand dollars a month for child support. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, a child can't. I mean, you know, child support, a child, how the child going to spend that much money in a month? 
But I'm here to tell you that this is what happens. And so, and, and I'm not getting child support. I'm, a, I'm for children getting it. If the, if the man is making that kind of money, then the child should get that kind of money. But the reason why is because many of the women that they're marrying are marrying them for that express purpose or that express reason. Not all women are, but there are some, and they're gold diggers, and they're out there to get those athletes. And I know because when we would come out from uh, playing a game at night, and when we would come out from the uh, clubhouse and, and we were leaving uh, the clubhouse and the dressing room and we're going out to get into the bus, that bus would take us to the hotel. And once we would walk out of the dressing room, there would be lines of women, women, all kinds of women just waiting for the ball players to come out to try to get a number or to go out and go to date with them or, or yes, even go to a hotel and have sex with them. This is what they would do because they wanted to get and trap these athletes and they would wait. And I mean, we would, you know, we'd be in the, at the clubhouse, we would eat and, and shower. And, and you may, it may be an hour, hour and a half before we would come out of the clubhouse and they're still there. The game's been over for an hour and a half and they're still out there waiting on the athletes to come out. What do you think they're waiting for? And so I'm sharing with you real life. This is what happens. It happens in churches. Preachers are walking around and they're wealthy and there are women that are trying to get a hold of his robe so that she can get a hold of his power. And I'm trying to help you to understand this is what happens. And I'm not coming against women because men do the same thing. When a woman is financially blessed, there are men that will try to hook up with her to get her to take care of him. So she will be the one doing all of the pulling and he'll be the one sitting around doing nothing. And this happens. It's called a lazy man. It's called a slothful man. And those kind of men don't deserve anything but to get a belt to them and beat them out of the house and beat them back onto that job. That's what they need to be doing. I want you to understand the power of God. When he is releasing wealth into your hands, he also wants to give you the opportunity. Now, here's another area. If you've been one that has been uh, in poverty all your life, therefore he has to break the worship of money, because a lot of times people think, oh, if I just had this my, my whole life, oh, if we just had $2 million, my life and all my troubles will be over. Let me tell you something, that $2 million is not going to fix every problem in your life. It may, it may fix your bills, but it's not going to fix your emotional problems. And if you had emotional issues of being abused or you got bad relationships or, or whatever, or you got sickness and disease in your body, I'm trying to tell you right now that money's not going to fix that. And I have, I'm telling you, I haven't been with people who have thought that once they made it to the top and they got to their wealth and the riches and they got the fame and the notoriety that they would, you know, have it all. And then I've had to minister to men who have found that they, they hit rock bottom. And the reason why is because what they thought they were going to get from the fame and notoriety. When they got it, they found out that there was still a void in their life that made them feel terrible. And that void in their life was that there was no God in their life. And I've had to minister to men and to pray for them in order for them to get their lives right with God. I want you to understand that wealth is just an asset. It is a resource of the earth. Riches are just resources of the earth that God has provided for you to have so that you can live in this earth and enjoy the things that God has given us and created. This is a beautiful world. The earth is beautiful. Now, I know a lot of it's on fire and we got tornadoes and all of that, but there are places in this world right now that you can go that are just absolutely beautiful. I remember when I was uh, in college and in the summer after I had uh, gotten out of uh, college for the summer and I was back and I went to Alaska and I was playing in a summer league there and up in Anchorage, Alaska. And I saw some of the most beautiful places. I saw water that I've never seen this color blue before. It was as if no human had ever put foot on those places. And I'm here to tell you that the earth is the Lord's and there are places in the earth that are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. In your state, there are places that are beautiful in, in your country, in whatever country you go to. And so God wants you to enjoy those places and enjoy those things because he created the earth for us. The earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. 
So he owns all of that. And he's your father. He wants you to be blessed and he wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to walk in those areas of prosperity and gain and wealth because that's the will of God. That's what the Bible said. This is the gift of God. Woo, glory, glory. I, I, I hope y'all are hearing this. All right, now, now let's, let's take a look. Let's see. We're going to break this down. You want to find out if, in fact, God wants you to be blessed? All right, now let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 13. Now, this is interesting. Proverbs 13. Watch this. In Proverbs 13, verse 22, the Bible says, A good man, that'll be a righteous man, leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So a good man or a righteous man, see, this is the word of God. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Now, this inheritance that he is talking about, it means to have property as a permanent possession and then to give it to someone that you want to receive it because you want to bless them with. Now, that could be a family member or it could be somebody else that you know. But a good man will leave inheritance and inheritance. And that would be property. That would be possessions. And I want you to understand. And he would leave that to his children's children. That's the grandchildren. So that means in, if, 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 if a good man can leave an inheritance to his grandchildren, that means to watch this now. That it was enough inheritance to take care of the children. And now there's enough inheritance for the children's children to have. This is what God wants you to understand. God wants you to have an inheritance. He wants you to be able to leave something to your children and then they can leave something to their children and it can continually go on. This is how God wants you to be blessed. But it's talking about a good man or a righteous man that leaves that inheritance to their children's children. Well, if you broke, you can't leave nothing to anybody. All you're going to do is leave debt and bills. You know, those bills, the white sheets of paper with the red on them, past due, overdue. You don't want to leave that as an inheritance. God wants you to leave wealth and riches as an inheritance to your children's children. So if, if that's the case, and I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of wealth and riches yet. So I'm working now to make sure that it comes to pass in my life so that I can leave that inheritance. But I'm going to tell you something right now, even in leaving wealth and riches and an inheritance to your children. Remember what the word said, what I shared with you earlier, how God says in his word, listen to what he said. Now, he wants you also to be able to walk in different gifts of the spirit. And different fruit of the spirit, the discerning of spirit. He wants you to walk in wisdom and understanding because you don't leave inheritance to people. I don't care if they're your children or friends or whatever, if they're not worthy of the inheritance. And so just because they're a blood relative of yours doesn't mean they get your inheritance. And that's why I said you got to learn how to say no. Because if they have not walked in the revelation of the power and the peace and the righteousness of God, then God does not want you casting your pearl before proverbial swine. He doesn't want you casting your pearls before those that don't acknowledge you, don't love you, don't care for you, but they want your stuff. God said, no, 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 no. That's why you got to exercise wisdom. So even when you're leaving an inheritance, you got to know who's worthy of the inheritance that you're leaving. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. God doesn't want you turning over his blessings to somebody that is ungrateful and unwilling to walk and obey God because those things will end up being a curse on them anyway. All right. Now, now notice what he goes on to say here, because this is interesting. He says, and the wealth of the sinner. Hmm. Now, we've been reading a whole lot about how God has given wealth and riches to the righteous. And then he wants us to enjoy it and, 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 and to partake of it and to have our portion and all of that. But now notice what the, the, what happens to the sinners. Well, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just or the righteous. Are y'all seeing that? The wealth of the sinner. 
Now, this wealth, it, it means those, the sinner's strength, their strength. It means their wealth. It means their influence. And it also means their finances and their financial influence. So in essence, what the Bible is saying is that the, 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 the strength and the wealth of the wicked or the sinner, the, uh, the wealth that makes them uh, powerful as an army, it, it, it means their influence, their financial influence and their financial gain or their riches. It says all of that of the sinner is laid up for the just. So it looks like what God is saying here is this. And what he's saying to you as a Christian is this. If you are a Christian and you are not walking in that great wealth yet, but you see sinners walking in great abundance, it is not for you to become jealous or envious of them because they're prospering. Because God said in his word that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. What God is actually saying is that there is a season of wealth transfer that's going to take place between the sinner and the saint and the sinner's inheritance, their wealth, their money, their, watch this now, their financial power, their goods are going to be transferred over to the righteous and the wealth will no longer of the righteous, the, the, the unrighteous will no longer be wealthy, but the righteous will walk in that wealth. So in essence, now what God is actually doing in it and what I'm trying to share with you is this. The sinner may have spent all their life working and trying to amass great wealth. And God is using the sinner. The person that does not acknowledge God, the person that does not want to serve God, the person that does not want to follow God. God is using that sinner. Watch this now to work 80 and 90 hours a week and and do whatever they can and break themselves down to get wealth and houses and cars and lands and income and finances and bank accounts and stocks and bonds and all of that. But God is allowing that sinner to work. And to work and to work and to work and to amass wealth because God wants the sinner to amass all that work, that wealth, because he's going to transfer that wealth into the hands of his people. So now what you should be doing when you see the 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 sinners out there and they're working and they're doing and they're, they or they're having concerts, you know, listen, I'm trying to help somebody because see you, you. Let me talk to you, gospel uh, Christian musicians. Those of you that are so jealous of the musicians in the world because of how much money the world musicians make. And so then you want to cross over into the secular music and play in Satan's music when you're a Christian and called to worship God with your instrument and with your life. And here you over here playing for the devil. God said, don't do that. He said, because see, that's jealousy and that's envy of the sinner. God said, let them do their concerts and let them do that because he said, I'm going to transfer their wealth into your hands. I want you to get this. See, this is what the Bible said. I'm not telling you what I think. This is exactly what God said. Look at what he said. I'm not just, listen to this. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And these ungodly musicians that are making satanic music and evil music that does not worship and praise God are sinners. And he said their wealth is laid up for the just. Well, I'm telling you, if you're a righteous musician, you better get ready to be blessed. But you got to focus on letting your gift serve God in your music gift. 
Don't go out playing secular music and trying to find secular artists to work with so you can get uh, you can get seen uh, in the secular world and then you can cross over and, and, and get to the top of the RB100 list. No, you don't need all of that. You don't need to be striving, trying to get Grammys and, and Oscars and all of that and stellar awards and all of that stuff. See, those are awards that the world gives. It's competition. God didn't create competition in his worship. He wants us all to be worshipers. And if you are a musician and you want to be blessed, I want you to take this word that I'm sharing with you right now. And I'm telling you, stir up the gift that God has given you of your music and then begin to spend some hours on your instrument. Become married to your instrument. Become one with your instrument so that what is in your spirit, when you play it, it will come out of you and out of your spirit into the instrument. And the instrument will then make and produce the sounds and the sounds will carry the spirit that came out of you and create music that will bring delight and joy to people. And that gift in you like that will then bring you before great men and before great people of wealth. And then God will transfer that wealth of the sinner over into your hands. If you want to be blessed, there's a lot of musicians right now. And there's a lot going around in the Christian world talking about musicians needing to get paid and they should get paid and uh, going to church. And, and, and they should do when they're when they're. But if they're working full time in the ministry now, now, if they're not working full time in the ministry, then they don't need to be getting paid. No, no, that if that's your job working in the ministry, you ought to get paid and you ought to get paid well. But if the church can't hire you to work full time and if you can't give if you got a job that you're already doing now, I mean, they should they can give you an offering and everything and they should do that. But I want you to understand something because uh, and this is just a whole nother area that I could get into uh, when I do when uh, when I'm doing the revelation of music. I really break this down into more uh, segments. But uh, a lot of times musicians are wanting to be paid uh, to play. And so they'll come and they'll play at the choir rehearsal and they'll, uh, you know, to teach the songs to the choir. And then they'll play on Sunday. Then they'll get up and leave and they get their paycheck and they go. And then you don't see them anymore until the next choir rehearsal. I know I've been in churches that done that. Now, what happens is, so the musician wants to be paid. Well, then, because they're coming to the choir rehearsal and they're teaching the choir the songs and they're playing the music on Sunday. Well, the choir is coming to choir rehearsal and they're learning the songs and they're practicing the songs and then they're coming on Sunday morning and they're singing. Why aren't they getting paid? How come they don't? How come there is not a big fuss made about the choir getting paid? Come on, somebody. And usually it's the organist or the keyboard player. Now, we ain't talking about the drummer or the guitar player or the saxophone player or the trumpet player. And so what we're finding is we've got financial, financial envy and jealousy going on even in the church. And pastors are using ministers of music and using them for their gift and prostituting their gift. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you and, and making promises. OK, we'll pay you two hundred and fifty dollars a week if you come. And then when they come and they and they play and they and, they, and then they don't they won't even give them a paycheck. And they say, well, praise God, brother. You know, we're not paying you. Well, see, that's not that's not right. That's 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 terrible. And pastors are doing musicians like that. And some musicians are getting so upset because they're getting treated like that so much that they just go over there and they're just playing for anybody that'll give them some money. Or they're just going to the secular world and they're going to club and they'll start playing sets at the club. They can make some money off of that way. But I want you to understand, you don't have to prostitute your gift like that. Let that gift be submitted unto God. Yield your ministry unto God and let God turn the wealth of the wicked into your hands and God will open up your door. Your gift will make room for you if you yield to the Holy Ghost. I didn't know. I didn't think I was going to have to go into all of that, but praise God. This is the truth anyhow. So I'm telling you, this is what God is trying to get us to understand. And this is what he's trying to get us to know. All right. Now, so, so what? So what now? The wealth of the sinner is laid up. Their influence, their financial influence, their money, their strength. Everything that they do is laid up for the just. Now, it says it's laid up for the just. Now, that word laid up, it means it's hidden to be high, to hide something. And it means to keep something secret. Uh oh, whoa. Uh -oh. It's talking about concealing things of great value. Watch this now. And another definition of this, this laid up is this. 
It is used for the storing up and the limiting of the days of the wicked and the ruthless. Oh my goodness. It stores up and limits the days of the wicked and the ruthless. What God is actually saying is he's allowing the sinners to keep making the wealth and to keep making the wealth and to keep making the wealth. And he's, but he's storing it up, but there's a time when God is going to release it. And that's what this word is talking about. There's a certain time that God's going to take that wealth that the, the, the sinner has been amassing and he's going to transfer that wealth over into the just. And so you need to see this, that when the sinner is out there working, God is laying up everything they're making and he's laying it up for you. He's storing it up, storing up things of great value and great wealth. This is what God is doing because what? Well, you would say, well, that's not fair. Why is God taking uh, what the what the sinner does and then give it to the Christian? And the Christian didn't do nothing to earn it. The sinner was the one that did out went out there and earned it. That's not fair. Oh, is that true? Well, let uh, uh, let's use your standard of not fair. You say it's not fair for God to give to Christians things that the sinner has worked and amassed all of their life, and now that they have amassed all this wealth, then God's just going to turn it over and give it to the Christian. So then that's not fair. That's not right. Is that, that's your argument, right? All right. Now let's, let's, let's see God's argument. What about God's side of the equation? God gave the sinner life. God gave the sinner the gift. God gave the sinner the gift to use it to worship and praise God. It was the sinner that decided not to serve God. It was the sinner that decided not to worship God. It was the sinner that decided to go and do with their gift what God didn't tell them to do when it is actually God's money and God's prosperity. Therefore, now, according to your logic, it's not fair for the sinner to have that money because they've stolen what God has blessed them with and they have used it for the purpose that God didn't intend it for. So using your, uh, using your, your, your analysis, it is only just and proper for God to take his wealth from the sinner who won't serve him and give it to his children that will serve him. All right. That's the end of that question. So it is just, and it is right. I'm, I'm here to tell you, God wants to transfer. And there is a time I'm telling you, there's a season coming where people are going to be handing over businesses to Christians. Musicians are going to be giving over contracts to musicians, Christian musicians, and the Christians will be able to affect those contracts in such a way that they'll only offer up music and praise and worship to God. Recording studios will begin to come to seek out Christian artists. And I hate to use the term artists because they're not really artists. They are Christian ministers of the gospel. And so uh, strike that artist from, but that's, you know, I hear that all the time and it just came, it came out, but they're not artists. They're really mu musicians. They're mu minstrels unto the Lord. They're ministers of music unto the Lord, servants of music unto the Lord, and they will worship God and give God praise. And God wants to, he wants to reimburse them for the service that he is giving him and giving the people of God. And so the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. There are businesses that are going to be handed over to Christians. I'm telling you that I'm telling you, you can see now there are many people. Businesses are failing. Christians are going to be getting businesses. They're going to be getting property for little or no money at all. See buildings that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Christians will get it for free or for 10 or $15 uh, or a dollar on a, uh, on a hundred. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's already taking place. God is going to prosper the children of God and he's taking the wealth from the wicked because they refuse to serve him. And then the, 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 the saints of God, the righteous ones of God are going to walk in that inheritance. So I'm telling you there that I'm telling you right now, bakeries are going to close. I'm, I'm telling you, clothing stores are going to close. I'm, t I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you businesses are going to close. Uh, I'm telling you right now. And, and they're going to be Christians who have been gifted in those areas that are going to walk in and take over those businesses 
businesses and receive the blessing of God, all of the equipment, all of the land, all of the property, and they're going to have it and they're going to use it for the glory of God. I'm telling you, this is what God is going to do. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Now, I want to share with you this same verse, but we're going to look at it in the Amplified Classic Edition and look at what it says here. It says a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness. See that inheritance that the good man is going to leave. They're not just going to leave money. They're going to leave moral st stability. Are y'all understanding that? They're going to leave moral stability and goodness so that he's going to teach his children how to be morally right and stable in God. That's the biggest inheritance that a Christian can leave. Now, if that child doesn't want to be morally stable and he don't want to receive that, then they're not going to get the inheritance. That's just all there is to it. Now, notice what it says here. And the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. The wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually. See, when it says finds its way eventually, that then lines up with what the scripture said in the King James verses, where the Bible said God is storing it up or is laid up. It is being stored up for a season. And that means that it is eventually going to get itself into the hands of the righteous. But God wants to keep building it up and building up and building up the quality and the quantity of the wealth so that when he transfers it over, it will take care of that Christian for the rest of their lives. This is what the word of God is saying. Are you seeing the will of God? Are you understanding? I'm telling you, this is God. Look, God wants you to be blessed. Stop walking around here with a poverty mentality. And seeing that the only way that you're going to make it, the all, all you can see is what you got in front of you now. I'm telling you, there's more. You got to take this word and you got to start warfaring with the promises of God and say what God says about you. And then don't take any no's for an answer. And then use the power of God, which is the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, that we'll be teaching you more about the power of God on Sunday and how to access that power and to begin to pray in the spirit and release the glory of God into your life so that the finances will be transferred into your hands and debt will be destroyed and broken out of your life so that you can walk in the wealth of God that God wants you to walk in and you will never again have to walk around in poverty or looking at average anymore. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, super abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So God can do super abundantly above, over and beyond and extremely above anything that we could even ask or think. So if God is telling us what he can do with the wealth, Think then that when you are yielding to the spirit of God and the power of God in you, he can do super abundantly above, over and beyond even that because God is unlimited in what he can do because the wealth of the sinner is laid up. Oh, my goodness for the just. All right. Now, now I'm going to show you a few more scriptures that's going to support that so that you can understand this. See, he says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now, there's some more scriptures in the Bible. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? There's some more scriptures in the Bible that talk about that the sinner's wealth is, is, is going to go into the hands of the righteous. Watch this. Go with me to Proverbs 28 and 8. Proverbs 28 and 8. Now, notice what it says in Proverbs 28 and 8. This is very interesting. The word says, he that by usury... An unjust gain increases his substance. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Oh, my goodness. Do you see that? He that by usury. Now, usury is when you begin to loan money with interest. That's what usury is. It means to loan money with interest so that you will be paid back interest on what you have loaned. Now, Christians shouldn't be doing that to other Christians. But now, and, the user, and then the unjust gain is when they are getting seriously oppressive with the interest that they're giving uh, and that they're charging so that 
they are gaining unjust and I mean completely just ridiculous gain from people. And so here it says he that by charging interest on loans and getting unjust and I mean just uh, supreme uh, outrageous advantage over them, they increase their substance. But then the Bible says, but he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Him that pities the poor, the one that pities the poor, that's the one that's being gracious to the poor, showing favor to the poor, having mercy and acting with grace towards someone who is in need. That's a righteous person. So the Bible says the crook is going to increase his substance and then he's going to gather it for him that will be righteous or pity the poor. So what's going to take place is that person is going to amass all this wealth from charging excessive amounts of interest, but then he's going to gather it up, but it's going to be given to him that pities the poor or the righteous person. So again, that sinner's wealth is going to be transferred over to the righteous. And then they, that righteous person is going to be a blessing to the poor. Oh, uh, come on. What, we got more than that. Come on here. Look at Je Job seven uh, twenty-seven. 27 in Job 27. Watch this now. In Job 27, verse 13 through 17. Now watch this. This is interesting. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of God. So this is the portion that the inherit that the oppressors and the wicked are going to get that they're going to receive at the hands of the almighty God. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. Wow. And his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Y'all getting that? So that means they may have bread, but it's not going to satisfy them. Now, these are the wicked people and the heritage of the oppressors. This is what they're going to receive. Their children, even if their children are multiplied, it is for the sword. That means they're always under danger of death and destruction. The offspring shall not be satisfied with the bread. They won't have a satisfaction in their life. Watch in verse 15. Those that remain of him, that's the wicked and the oppressor, shall be buried in death. And his widow shall not be able to weep. Oh, yo, this is, see, verse 13, this is the portion of a wicked man with God and the, and, and the heritage of the oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. So God is working them up. See, God is telling them, you're wicked, you're oppressive. This is what I'm going to do to you. You're going to receive this as judgment from my hand. See, God is, is, you see the parallel here? When you are righteous, God, wealth and riches and great abundance shall be in your house. Your children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. But now the wicked and the oppressors, Though they have an abundance of children, they are for the sword or for danger or for destruction. And the unjust people and the wicked people, they are going to have judgment from God. And there's going to be destruction and death. That's the, that's the price you pay for being wicked and unjust in God's world. Because sooner or later, you're going to pay. All right, now let's get back to this here because this is very interesting here. It says in verse 16, now this is interesting. Look at this now. Though he heap up silver as the dust. Oh, I mean, he got a whole lot of silver that he's got silver like dust and prepare raiment as the clay. Oh, he got so many clothes that it's, it's just like clay. I say, so though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the day, he may prepare it. Oh, he may prepare it. But guess what? But the just shall put it on and the innocent shall divide the silver. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory, glory. Are y'all hearing that? He said, though he heap up silver as dust and he prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. And the innocent shall divide the silver. Oh, I'm here to tell you, they get all the clothes. Don't be worried about them, all them gowns and dresses and clothes they're wearing. They can heap it up. They can heap up the silver as dust. 
but it's the just that's going to put it on and it's going to be given to the just. See, God is all throughout the Bible. He's showing you that. And what he is trying to get you to see is that God, according to Psalms 24, that God, watch this now, owns the earth. He owns the world. He owns the people and he owns everything in the earth. It's God's. So when people that are in the earth that God owns won't honor him and won't reverence him with the things that God has provided in the earth, the resources, and they take those resources and they amass great wealth. And especially at the expense of other people, God says that this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to require at their hand. And I'm going to return all of that that they have worked all their lives for. And I'm going to give it to the, to the just. So even though they've amassed all kind of clothes, the righteous are going to put it on. And even though they've got all this silver like dust, it's going to go into the hands of the righteous. So what you need to start praying is, Father, let me be prepared so that when you are ready to transfer the sinner's wealth into my hand, I will be ready and prepared and I will be able to, uh, to understand that time and I will walk in the wisdom of God and I will be blessed of God. And I will listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you to tell God. I will be glad to receive it and I will eat of it and I will enjoy my labor. That's what God wants you to do. I'm here to tell you that's what God wants you to do. Well, praise God. I, I, I'm telling you, God is blessing us. I got one more scripture. And then we're, this is going to end this, this whole series on prosperity, God's way. But I want you to understand, God wants you to have money. Somebody say money. Money is not evil. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. But our money is, is an inanimate object. And when it is used for the kingdom of God, then it is used is great. When it's used to finance the things of the devil, then its use is wicked. But the money is not good or bad. Money is just a resource. But now I want you to see this last verse, because this is going to cap everything that we have taught you over these past weeks and this whole series of prosperity God's way. And I want you to see beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond an inkling and a twinkling of a doubt that God's word is true. Y'all ready? All right, go with me. Two. Are you, ready? Are you ready for this now? I don't know if y'all can handle this. I don't know if you can handle this. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And look at what this is. This is going to blow your mind. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. See, you got to have you got an inheritance, but you better have wisdom with it. And by it, there is profit to them that see the sun. Notice this for wisdom is a defense and wait a minute, and, and what? And money is a defense. Oh, oh, wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. Oh, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So wisdom will defend you and money defends you. Oh, 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 oh we ain't, uh, you know, ain't too many people preaching about that in church. Money is a defense. Oh, you just money hungry. Now you talk about money as a defense and you got notice God uses wisdom and money in the same sentence. And he, he compares them both as defense. But I notice what God says in verse 11. He says, wisdom is good with an inheritance. Now we understand that an inheritance includes money. And he said, wisdom is good. So you want to have wisdom with your inheritance. So when you have wisdom with your inheritance, notice what it does by it, by wisdom with the inheritance, there is profit to them that see the sun. When you add wisdom to your money, when you add wisdom to your inheritance, there is profit to you. There is benefit to you. There is an abundance of, 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 of profit and advantage and prosperity to you. 
because you're using wisdom with your inheritance. Wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge of God to a circumstance or a situation correctly. In other words, wisdom does what God says you are to do. Wisdom acts the way God says you are to act. That's what wisdom does. So wisdom is a defense. You uh, See, I want you to see this in black and white. Wisdom is a defense. Are you seeing that? Wisdom is. Wisdom gives you skill. It gives you experience and shrewdness. You're correctly applying knowledge to the things so that you can get the results. Now, this word defense, it means it's a symbol for protection or refuge. Are y'all getting this? It's a symbol for protection and refuge. So wisdom will give you protection and it will also give you refuge. So whenever you need to be protected of something and you need to run to some place so that you can be defended, wisdom will give it to you. And then money is a defense. And there are times when money will give you protection and money will give you refuge. Money is a defense. I want you to see that again. Money is a defense. Money will give you protection. Money will protect you from poverty. Money will give you refuge into places and to things that are of high value so that you can enjoy them. For the Bible said God has given unto us all things richly to enjoy. Money is a defense. See, I mean, that, that scripture has been in the Bible all these years. Ever since it's been in the Bible. Money is a defense. Money is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with money. As a matter of fact, when you use wisdom, and you attach wisdom to money, God will turn that money into your defense and it will provide you shelter. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. It'll provide you pleasure. And so now it'll defend you against being sad and broke and poor. And it'll, you know what else it'll do? It can defend you of becoming a criminal. Stealing because you got to. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm trying to help you right now. I'm trying to let you know that God wants you to have prosperity. Because again, let's see it as we close. Wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So when you tie wisdom to money and that word money is money, you know, like money, silver money, it's a medium of exchange. That's a defense. It will protect you. It'll protect you from shame when you go in the store and want to buy something and ain't got enough money to get it. Oh, come on, somebody. It'll protect you from feeling bad about yourself when you want to buy your child something and, and your child really wants something, but you know you don't have enough money because there's too many bills and you don't have any, enough money to get it and you're feeling bad. You're feeling like a bad parent. I didn't get them anything. Uh, you, you know, and, and, and the devil just brings that condemnation. Well, money will defend you from that because when God puts money in your hands, then you can get your child whatever you want. And then you teach your child that this has come from God and that all blessings and every good and perfect gift cometh down from the father of lights in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Everything that I got, it has come from God. And if I'm going to continue to have the things that I want to have, I'm going to have to continue to depend on God because he is my source. For the Bible says, for my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And remember this, wisdom is a defense and money is a defense too. Just make sure that you tie wisdom onto your money so that God will give you the right way to deal with money the way he wants you to do. Then you will have prosperity. Huh? God's way. Oh, praise God. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. If it hadn't been to you, I didn't preach myself happy right now. And I'm excited because I'm going to pray and stand with God that he would prosper me because the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants and of his children. So then I want to make my daddy happy. So I want some stuff that he has provided for me. And I'm going to do that. And right before I close, God has anointed me to have a gift and a gift of, of, of praying and releasing supernatural debt cancellation. 
And so I'm going to pray for all of you that are listening. Now, let me tell you something right now. All of these promises that we have seen in the word for all of these weeks that we've been teaching on prosperity, there is one underlying factor that runs through the whole gamut of this teaching. Prosperity is yours as long as you are righteous and as long as you're obeying God. So don't think as I begin to pray and we begin to release supernatural debt cancellation, if you're going to sit there and still live and you're not going to live the way God wants you to live and going to still do the stuff that you're going to do that prayer then this word ain't going to work for you. So don't be sitting up there and, you know, think, oh, I'm, I'm getting out of debt. And then you're still evil and you're still living wrong. It's not going to work for you unless your lifestyle is lining up with the will of God. And unless my lifestyle is lining up with the will of God, then all of these things that God has talked about, we are on the wicked side instead of the blessing side of the righteous. So I want you to understand that. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, everybody that is listening to this word, uh, either through uh, the audio or through watching through the video, I release right now a spirit of debt cancellation over every family at Antioch International Ministries. And I release the spirit of debt cancellation over everybody else that's watching or listening to this video right now that desires to be prosperous the way you want them to be prosperous. And so I speak right now and I declare that supernatural debt cancellation come upon you now in the name of Jesus. I declare that every bill that you owe. Every debt that you owe, that includes utility bills, old bills, bills that you didn't even know existed. Every bill that you owe is paid in full. You owe nobody any money whatsoever. I release and I speak that, Father, those who will walk worthy of your calling, those that will walk worthy and will trust your word and will trust in you and lead not to their own understanding, but in all their ways they will acknowledge you, you will direct their paths into supernatural debt cancellation and then prosperity your way so that they can enjoy the wealth and the riches that you have placed in their lives. I speak this. I release this. I break the power of power. Poverty. Satan, your deception of poverty and lack for Christians. I curse your lies in the name of Jesus at the root. And I speak death and destruction to every satanic lie that has been set up in the minds of Christians that God doesn't want them wealthy. He doesn't want them rich. And I release into them now the truth of God. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Well, praise God. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. This series has surely been a blessing to me. And I thank God that you have watched and you have listened and you have been attentive students and you're going to walk in the revelation of this word. Continue to walk with God. Continue to pray. Continue to stand on the word and trust in his word for truly prosperity is yours because Jesus died that you might have it. Right? Yes, he did. He sure did. And remember these words that the Lord Jesus even said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. God bless you. We'll see you next Thursday as we start a new series in the name of Jesus. Until then, be blessed in Jesus name.